the vast sands of the Sahara sweeping across northern Africa. At this time of year, the dust-laden Sirocco blows, a near-constant wind that spreads light sand into every crevice and corner. Mauritania is a land of nomads and camels, where life has been ruled for millennia by the desert. These beasts are actually dromedaries, the one-humped variety of camel. The oasis reverberates with the sounds of Mauritania's folk music. The drum is called a tabal and it's been handed down from the Moors. The anguished vocals of Mauritania have been compared to the Spanish flamenco or to the music indigenous to Pakistan and India. In Mauritania, people still live in a medieval way. Lightweight cloth is made from locally grown cotton, and vegetable and mineral dyes create the exotic colors. They sleep in family tents, a holdover from their nomadic ways. There's plenty of time to prepare the traditional couscous meal in the open air. These villagers live as their forebears. Couscous is the staple of their diet and is made using time-honored traditions and a lot of elbow grease. In this remote stretch of the Sahara Desert, there aren't a lot of modern conveniences. In these traditional communities, life is ruled by religion and the calls for prayer. Women pray outside the mosque. They're not allowed inside. Mauritania is one of the poorest countries in the world and has a high fertility rate. On average, each woman gives birth to six children. Aisha is a novelty. There aren't many foreigners living in Mauritania and only a handful settle in the desert. She left her native France decades ago, attracted by the simple way of life. Here, I've had lots of problems being accepted as part of the community as an outsider. Because people here are living together as a community, even though they have their own houses. Neighbors are an integral part of the household. They are very important to any community. Every day, Aisha follows her routine. Life is uncomplicated and involves the community. She prepares for prayer and then meets her local friends in front of the mosque. The official religion of Mauritania is Islam, and Aisha has become a devout follower. But this traditional lifestyle is now threatened by the same entity that brought it into existence, the desert. It's dry, dusty, and constantly hot. The flat plains are mostly barren. The wind erosion is the enemy. The constant wind shatters the rocks, turning them into sand. The sand accumulates and forms dunes, buries palm trees, and eventually engulfs the few oases. The water supply is crippled, and vegetation relied on by the animals shrivels and dies. With all this movement of the dunes, there have been consequences for shepherds and farmers. The result is that the villagers have moved on. There isn't any more farming or shepherding for them here. So they had to move on in search of another livelihood. The desert advances at a rate of up to one mile per month. A vast percentage of Mauritania has already been taken by it. Ancient cities like Chinguetti along the caravan route to Mali have become ghost towns. A vicious cycle has been created. Shepherds allow their livestock to overgraze the limited vegetation. The area becomes deforested, clearing the way for further soil erosion. 
The cattle die, people go hungry. The situation is particularly acute in the south of the country, in the region of Kipa. The government has recently declared a state of food emergency due to the lack of rain. There is a wind erosion. First of all, the ground has been uncovered by the lack of vegetation. And this has caused the progression of the dunes by the strength of the winds. At the moment, 90% of the country is suffering. There is only 10% worth of potential land left for agriculture, forestry and shepherding. And this problem is always increasing. But if the desert brings destruction, it also breeds endurance. The community of Lakhdar has decided to fight back. Every day they get together to erect barriers to protect their precious oasis. Under the guidance of an environmental specialist, members of the community take on the arduous task of fixing the dunes. Old men as well as women join forces to fight the common enemy. It's not only to improve living conditions, it's an obligation as well. It's a duty for the whole community to fight against this desertification, particularly because the ground is very fertile and the aquifer is easily accessible. Women of the Lakhdar community are taking an active role in forming cooperatives to grow food. This initiative not only reduces hunger, but generates much needed cash. Part of the crop is shipped out to be sold in the cities. Children help in drawing the precious water from one of the few remaining wells. The women nurture their survival by carefully planting vegetables, potatoes, carrots and sorghum. Our market garden production is very important to us. On top of the money it makes, it provides food for malnourished children and pregnant women. The pregnant women in the village have seen an improvement in their health. They come less often to the medical centers because they're much better nourished. So on top of our income, we plan to improve the health and nutrition of the entire population of the town. But how long will life be possible in the simplicity and quietness of the desert? Those living in this remote and desolate place are doing their best, nurturing new growth to guard against the encroaching sands and feed their families. But how long can they survive? The ultimate answer may lie in the one thing desert people have in abundance, faith. It's faith that gives you all the strength, the will to bear this present situation. Because life isn't easy now. And without faith, you will suffer. Tu vas souffrir. Despite their faith and endurance, the shifting sands and undulating dust of the Sahara may prove too much for this remote community trying to eat out a living to keep the desert at bay.